Hey, Shalom. I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Rekah Kodash. Double honors unto our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, Wakasayim, Wabarakim. Peace, mercy, and blessings unto all of you Akim out there, you brothers, Zequanim, the elders, the bishops. All right, to the hopeful, like the men that are pushing this word, wherever you may be scattered. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh which means he exists or he is to be. The true name of the son is Yahweh Shai, which means he is to deliver. Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai. Barak Shemka Yahweh, Barak Shemka Yahweh Shai. All right? And what that means in the Kudash or the Holy Tongue or the Paleo Hebrew is bless the name Yahweh, bless the name Yahweh Shai, blessings unto the name Yahweh and unto the name Yahweh Shai. All right? And when you pray unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, you have to pray to him in the name of the Son. Bahashim means in the name, <clears throat> right? Pretty much this lesson, you know, going in on prophecy, you know. <clears throat> Brother uh, Gabar has sent this article. Then the Spirit led me to uh, dig in and find further articles. This Vladimir Putin hobbles down a red carpet with his arm hanging lip as he steps off plane in Iran to force new anti-Western alliance. And this is straight out of Ezekiel 38 chapter. All right, so we're just going to jump right into it. This is Ezekiel 38 and 1. And the word of Yah by Shem El Shai came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the tea prince of Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And that's pretty much dealing with the lamb as what we know today as Russia. Okay. Dealing with the landmass over there, Gog and Magog, the, the land over there, Russia. All right, now also, according to Bible prophecy, Russia is also known as the bear. Okay, but you just had these three nations come together Russia, which is Gog and Magog, also called the bear. You had Turkey and Iran as Persia, which going back to Ezekiel 38. You know, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Turkey is Torgomar. All right, Ezekiel 38 and 3. And thus said Jehovah Shemel Shai Power, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach, and Tubal. And I will turn thee back, right? The most eyes against the Russians because at the end of the day, they're Edomites. Now they're a different son of Esau. They're not like these um, alphabet demonic Edomites in the West. You know, I will say that they're warlike people, but they're still Edomites. It's the most eyes against them. The most I got the spirit on them. To bring back that old USSR, that's why the bears on the on the attack, you know, eating up Ukraine. Uh, you know, Belarus could be next, and they're taking back what was taken from them. Okay, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thy army, horses, and horsemen. All of them clothed with all sorts of armor that's going to the military might, their equipment, their rapacity, their fierceness, their technology, all of that, man. Even the great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Now, Persia, all right, the name Persia was changed in 1937, 1935 to Iran, or Tehran, which is the capital in Persia. So those Iranians are Persians. Ethiopia, Hamites, Africans. Libya, Hamites, Africans. You know, they just found all that gold over there. You know Esau going to go over there and try to use his muscle to take that. Okay, so na different nations, in order to protect themselves from the West, they're going to ally themselves with Gog and Magog the Bear. All of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his bands, which I believe is Turkey. The House of Togo morphed in North Quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. Okay, so let's go back to, and this is from the, uh, the page I follow on Instagram. And time headlines. It says, Prophecy Watch, Putin seeks to cement ties with Persia, all right, and Turkey in rare trip abroad. You see that? Prophecy Watch, man. Okay, what do y'all should I say? Watch as well as pray. 
Okay, pray always. Okay, prophecy means to say before it happened. It was prophesied thousands of years ago that these nations would come together. Okay. Right, so let me just go into it. It says, in his first trip abroad since Russia invaded Ukraine, President Vladimir V. Putin had recently compared himself to Peter the Great, which I believe was an Israelite, held court among his, that ruled, that reigned during the uh, medieval times, held court among his close allies in Central Asia and insisted that the war was going according to plan. According to NY Times, his second trip announced by the Kremlin on Tuesday will take him into far more difficult diplomatic terrain meetings next week. In Tehran with the leaders of Iran and Turkey, two nations sometimes align and sometimes sharply at, at odds, sharply at odds with Russia and with each other. The meetings, if they go well for Mr. Putin, represent an opportunity to shore up military and economic backing to counter the West military assistance to Ukraine and its sanctions against Russia. So alliances are being formed. These nations are realizing they have a common enemy and they have to do something about these, these sanctions. Okay? But Mr. Putin also have to do damage control, may have to do damage control, trying to soothe relations with Iran as Russia eats into a share of the global oil market with Turkey, a NATO member that over Moscow's vehement objections, just allowed the alliance to expand along Russia borders. Yep, and they also, NATO also took in NATO also took in two new members, Sweden and Finland, that are on Russia's borders as well. Okay, so they're, they're pretty much forcing Russia's hand. Okay. You can see right there, there's Russia, there's Ukraine, that's Crimea, above Ukraine is Belarus, all right, north, uh, west of Russia is Finland, and right over there is Sweden, okay. While high fuel prices have buoyed Russia's revenues and it has been emboldened by gradual military gains to Ukraine, Western sanctions have wounded this economy and restricted its ability to build or buy technology for military use. According to the White House, Russia is seeking hundreds of drones from Iran, including those capable of firing missiles, and analysts say that Iran could offer Russia a critical trade route and expertise in circumventing sanctions and exporting oil. Okay. Russia's military has seized control of much of the eastern Donbass region of Ukraine at a fearful cost and destruction of casualties on both sides. It has put the advance temporarily on hold while trying to regroup better units, but continues to pawn Ukrainian targets with shells, rockets, and missiles. Next week in Tehran, the Iranian capital, Mr. Putin will meet jointly and separately with President Ibrahim, which I believe goes back to Abraham, Raisi of Iran, and President Recep Tayyip Erdogan of Turkey, the Kremlin spokesman Demetrius Peskov told reporters on Tuesday, Mr. Peskov said the leaders would discuss peace talks on Syria, a decade-old conflict in which Iran and Russia have backed the government, and Turkey has supported an opposing rebel faction. Syria is just one sticking point between Iran and Turkey, each of which could help Mr. Putin circumvent Western measures or drive wedges between the countries that united to support Ukraine. <coughs> Mr. Putin's diplomatic push will also seek to counter efforts this week by President Biden as he travels to the Middle East to meet the leaders of Saudi Arabia and other Gulf states in which the people of Saudi Arabia are mocking Biden and mocking America as well. Okay, but they actually have respect for Putin. Okay, so, you know, out around Razzar, that means Lord willing, this, uh, you know, this, uh, the most High is going to allow these nations to set aside their disagreements and form alliances. Another thing that's recently in the news, Iran and Persia claims they are now capable of building a nuclear bomb, <laughs> which they may have been had nuclear capability, or they could just get nukes from the bear. You see, because the scriptures talks about a third world, which it will be 
we're burning in fuel of fire, nuclear burning and nuclear destruction, right? Tehran is capable of making a nuclear bomb, but it's not, but has yet to decide whether to build it. A senior advisor to Iran's Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei told Algeria's Arabic, Arabic service on Sunday, Tehran will also directly respond against Israel should its security be targeted. The report says, citing the advisor, in a few days we were able to enrich uranium up to 60%, and we can easily produce 90% enriched uranium. Iran has the technical means to produce a nuclear bomb, but there has been no decision by Iran to build one, Kamal Karazi said. In 2018, former U.S. President Donald Trump ditched Tehran's 2015 nuclear deal with world powers, under which Iran curbed its uranium enrichment work, a potential pact with the nuclear weapons, because these nations, especially the, you know, the FJs, the Holy Land, they do not want Iran to possess nukes because they are sworn enemies. You see, in exchange for relief from economic sanctions, about a year into Trump's maximum pressure policy on Iran, Tehran started violating the pact's nuclear restrictions. Iran has long denied seeking nuclear weapons, saying it is refining uranium only for civilian, civilian energy uses, and has said its breaches of the international deal are reversible if the U.S. lifts sanctions and rejoins the agreement. Right, so they 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 need those nukes. All right, because according to prophecy, different nations are going to launch nukes. You know, this nation, they're going to launch nukes against the 1948ers. Indirect talks between Iran and President Joe Biden's administration, which aimed to bring both Washington and Tehran back in compliance with the nuclear pact, have stalled since March. Karazi said Tehran would never negotiate over its missile program and regional policy as demanded by the West and its allies in <coughs> the Middle East. So they're not in the ghost, they're not in the spirit of negotiating. You know, don't Esau say that in his movies, we don't negotiate with terrorists. Well, they're the real effing terrorists. This is from Reuters. Putin forges ties with Iran's supreme leader and Tehran talks. Discusses Ukraine grain exports with Turkey's Erdogan. Turkey started Syrian operations also on focus. You see, I'm not going to read too much of this article, you know, because I already read a couple. Let's get back in some scripture. Ezekiel 38 and verse 6 says, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togomorph, the North Quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. So there's going to be many nations, all right? Iran, and uh, which is Persia and Turkey, amongst those nations that ally themselves with Gog and Magog to combat the onslaught of the West, pretty much, the sanctions. The, uh, the ravaging of their lands, right? It says, be thou prepared and prepare for themselves. So they're in the spirit of war. Thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. So, so the most I got the spirit on the bear to be a guard unto these nations. So they're protecting them. Place of confinement, prison guard, watch observance. All right? So... Just imagine that a prison guard watches over prisoners to make sure they don't get out. But the Mosai is going to have to bear watch over these nations to make sure America doesn't intervene with their deals, you know, or try to bring their military in. It says, one who keeps watch, a body of soldiers, also care custody, guardianship, all right, keeper. So they're pretty much going to be their brother's keeper to these other nations, man. And it's all prophecy. Wars and rumors of wars. <clears throat> this is Revelation 11 and 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe coming quickly, and the third woe is dealing with World War Three. That's what's in the future. All right? We're not here to give you a prosperity doctrine. You know, sow a seed. All right? That's bullshit. All right? If you don't repent, you're going to die in the famine, the pestilence, you know, the nukes, if you make it that long, you know, but looked at this war, pestilence and famine set to grip the final months of 2022. OK, that's the spirit. Enjoy this summer while you can, because the global events will soon escalate to an even more alarming level. Needless to say, if 2022 ended right now, it will be remembered for a lot of really bad things. OK. The red horse, the black horse, and soon to be what? 
the pale horse. Because right now we're in the black horse. You're getting ready to have to pay a day's wages for food. Right? Let's go to Isaiah 9. Because nuclear missiles in the scriptures are referred to as arrows. Right? And these different nations that possess nukes, they're going to use them. This is Isaiah 9 and 5. For every battle of the warriors with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Meaning this third woe is going to be with burning and destructive by nuclear fire. It's no coincidence that NYC just put out a nuclear PSA. It's no that's no coincidence. Okay. New York City issues PSA for preparing for a nuclear attack. You think that's a coincidence? It's no coincidence. All right. In fact, let's go to second edge of 16. You know, these people, they ain't paying attention. So this is going to caught. This is going to get caught out there. This is second edge of 16. Let's see. I'm kind of jump around. And verse 7, may one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer and the arrow is the nukes. A strong archer we're dealing with these nations and, you know, like Russia has FOAB, you know, they have Satan 2 missiles. They have all type of different nuclear capability, which is far more advanced than America. So they're the strong archer. The arrows that they're shooting are nukes. And now you got Iran saying they can make nukes. You see, no coincidence. We'll jump down to verse 13. For strong is his right hand that bended the bow. His arrows that he shooted are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot to the ends of the world. This is how we know it's dealing with nukes. Because you have something called intercontinental ballistic missiles that can be shot in the ends of the world. Regular bow and arrow, you know, that the natives, tribe of Gad and Reuben used to fight with. You can't shoot those into the end of the world. But now with the technology... You know, the Lord creating the smith that blow the coal in the fire. Now they got nuclear capability that they can actually build intercontinental ballistic missiles, put, you know, X amount of warheads up in there and do a significant amount of damage. Okay? <laughs> this is Isaiah 54, 16. Behold, I have created the smith that blow the coals in the fire. And that's parabolic for the German scientists doing Operation Paperclip. And the Lord gave them the knowledge to uh, create these nuclear bombs. And more so today. There's far more events. And that bring it forth the instrument for its work. And I've created the waster to destroy. And Esau is the waster. That's why Robert Oppenheimer made a statement. He said, I'm become the destroyer of worlds. Uh, become deaf, which he was quoting a Hindu god. But yeah, let's read it. Now I am become deaf, the destroyer of worlds, after witnessing the first nuclear explosion. See that? That's the waster, man. <laughs> That's the fucking waster. This is Mark 13 and verse 7. And when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, right? We're not supposed to be troubled. Because things are going to the plan. It's all going to the plan, according to the plan, and the will of Yahweh Shem Yosha. All going according to the plan. All right? For such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes. There's, every day there's earthquakes. Earthquakes in Peru. Earthquakes in Chile. Okay? Earthquakes in um Philippines. Earthquakes in... Australia, no, no, Nebraska, Alaska, all right, different parts of South America, earthquakes, Africa, earthquakes, Middle East, earthquakes, and diverse places, meaning all around the world, and there shall be famines, okay, which there's famines all around the world, and troubles, you go into this word troubles, the word there is sedition, <laughs> uproars of the people, man. Strong's G, 5016. Taraje. Taraje. Which means sedition. It's Mark 13 and 7. You know, looking at that word troubles, the word there means sedition, uh, commotion, you know, and pretty much uproars 
of the people. Which that we see that happening in, over there in uh, Netherlands, Dutch, with, with the farmers, Sri Lanka, Panama. So all over the world, there, there's troubles, commotions, and seditions. So this is just a further sign, disturbances, commotions, tumult, you know. Strong's G, 5016. Taraje. Taraje. So that just goes to show you what time that we we're actually living in. Okay, I read it again. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines. All right, with the heat waves that's burning down over there in Europe. All right, it's going to cause a global famine. Back in uh, May, they told you that there's only 10 weeks of wheat left in the world. Over well, here, it's almost August, you know. And these are the beginning of sorrows. Yeah, so we're in the beginning of sorrows. I mean, the beginning of World War Three. All right. The season of the second coming of, of Yahweh Shai. Okay, with that, I'm going to end it. You know, I pray that this has been edifying and uh, comforting and faith boosting. I want to say, which means all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rekakwadash. Double honors unto our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And uh, Shalom to the elect.